What's up, Destroyer Nation? This is Mo, aka the Destroyer of Treadmills, and I'm here with Lindsay, my beautiful wife. And tonight we are kicking off the maiden voyage of the Destroyer Nation podcast. It was a lot of fun, wonderful people, lots of engagement. Go ahead and check it out. We're going to talk about obesity and marriage and weight loss and marriage and how how that can both negatively and positively affect your marriage. And then we're also going to talk a little bit about um, for those of you who are starting your weight loss journey and looking to get going, but you're not quite as far as you would like to. We're going to go over some of the things that we've done uh, to get over those hurdles um, in weight loss and, and marriage. So you're going to be asking me things, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's good. Pretty deep things. I have not thought about any of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, first off, as Lindsay discussed, today was a huge day for us. I got to stay home with mini, mini destroyer. That's, that's our youngest. And then we destroyer, <laughs> we destroy <laughs> And then uh, Lindsay actually went out with mother-in-law know. destroyer. She's my mom. I yeah. don't know, but yeah, I don't know. So anyways, my mom. <laughs> Lindsay went out with her mom and uh, went school shopping for Cora for the first time. So this, this year she's... And we hacked her hair off too. So <laughs> honey, let's, uh, let's pretend that we've never met before. <laughs> and, uh, and go ahead and, and tell me a little bit about um, about who you are, uh, what you do for fun. I don't know. I stay home with my children all You're the time. You're stay home mom. Yes. And how, how does that affect, um, does it affect your ability to work out? Do you find that you get to work out more? Or? No, I don't find that I get to work out more. I probably do have more opportunities than most as far as like, um, you know, having, having time to do something. Um, but like as far as going to the gym or going and doing anything, but I've found that I have to be creative and have specific tools and things at home in order Um, to. So what do you do to, for a stress relief? What do you do? I know, I know as your (laughs) husband that you don't get a lot of time to do very much. Um, for those of you who don't know, Lindsay literally holds down the fort for us. I mean, she is, she's huge. So, um. I mean, <laughs> she's huge in, for our family. Wow. You're not huge. You're not huge. <laughs> anyway, that quote on. from Frozen where she's like, you look beautiful. And she goes, well, you look beautifuler. I mean, not fuller. Not fuller. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so like exercise wise um, at home, I do kettlebells. Um, I try to play with the girls and I'm always moving here I'm always you know hauling something cleaning something purging something like you know right moving I think that's a really it's although I wouldn't call any of that stress relief (laughs) 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 perhaps stress inducing (laughs) it is actually a really it's a really interesting thing to to touch on is weight loss and being a stay-at-home mom Mm -hmm. um because I think from my my narrow perspective as, as a guy who goes away to work in, and I think maybe a lot of people, um, they don't realize that stay at home moms like you are constantly going. Well, yeah. And like, it was funny. I was, um, thinking earlier today, I was telling my mom actually about our camping trip and how Allison was like, Oh, can you believe we all have to go back to work tomorrow? And I was like, (laughs) like half joking. I was like, well, not me. And then I was like, wait a minute. I've been working all weekend. Like this is yeah, actually this is, worse. Like taking do. my children out into the woods is actually more work than us just being at home. <laughs> but but here here's the thing, right? Is that I think a lot of people who don't know what the stay at home mom life is like, they go, "Oh man, she's got tons of time to put on a a workout DVD and oh yeah, no, you know, get her P ninety X in." No, no, uh, <laughs> no. There's none of that happening. So so. Maybe I ha- I actually have it easier because I get to wake up in the morning, go to the gym, right. and then go to work, where I get to sit in an air conditioned right. office. Well, all and day. you don't, you know, as the person who's working, you don't have to worry about where your kids are or who's with sure. them or what yeah, they're doing right. because you know I am. Right. Um. And so I remember, like, I remember 
when I was first, um, I don't know, Cora was probably like eight months old maybe. And I got some yoga DVD or something like that. And I don't know if you remember, I think you were there actually when she, I was, oh, maybe you weren't, but I was trying to do yoga, like in the living room of our apartment and she was hitting me with like <laughs> her toy, like just, and it was so funny. And I remember I posted about it on Facebook and, and thought it was so funny that she was like, <coughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that she was like, you know, I was like, Oh, maybe this is a sign that I shouldn't do it. But it's literally been like that ever since. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no, I don't want to say that I don't have time. Cause it's not that I don't have time. It's just that there's not, you know, I, I feel like I, in really good faith buy you know, a Jillian Michaels DVD or something and it's, you know, 30 minutes or whatever. And I don't, I, I can't find a solid 30 minute block where right. I'm not being interrupted or whatever. I mean, whatever the yeah. other things, especially now the girls aren't, they don't nap anymore. Sure, right, right. Um, so there's, it just, you know, now let, let me ask you this. What, what has worked for you? Cause we've talked a lot about what yeah. has not worked as yeah. a, as a stay at home so, mom. Well, I'm still fat. So <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are not, you, it's awkward as, as a podcast yeah. host and, and your husband. husband. Cause I'm like, don't you call her fat, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but you're her. So <laughs> right. Were you going to like discredit me? Or something? Yeah. So, so um, what, what has worked? So I think actually the biggest thing, um, for me has been incorporating fasting, um, focusing more on my diet instead of my activity, just because I am always moving. It really yeah. is that, but I also know that I, um, not that I still don't, but I have in the past reached for convenience foods more often right. than, um, you know, taking time to prepare something or even, yeah. you know, I guess there's a lot of healthy things that I don't, that are all, that are equally as convenient. Um, but just trying to be mindful of what I'm eating more than my activity. And yeah. I really, I honestly, the kettlebell workout that I found, I found it on Pinterest and I started doing it at the gym when I was going to the gym more. Um, but then we bought that kettlebell and I just do it at home. Like it's, and it doesn't take very long and it's something that, you know, you do in like a circuit. So I, and it's pretty quick. I mean, I yeah. want to say it's maybe like five minutes for the first one. I can find five minutes. Right. right, right. So I'll do five minutes and then take care of the next thing, whatever sure. it is, you know, yeah. moving the laundry or whatever. And then, um, and then I can do another circuit and then I can sweep and then I can do another circuit and right. I could, you know, wipe someone's butt. Like you know, and I, I can find time to incorporate all of that in instead of, you know, having Jillian Michaels yelling at me on from the TV. And I'm just like, <laughs> you don't understand. Jillian. While a baby is hitting you. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's actually, uh, let's, let's rewind a little bit and let's unpack that. Um, you s- <laughs> shout out Stu. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know our, our pastor, uh, it's like a running gag. He constantly uses the word unpack. I love it. It's like yeah, one it's, of his keywords. Yeah. It's, and it's and honestly so grown on me. whenever someone says it, we're like, Ooh, it's the best. It's the best quote. way to say that you want to dive deeper. into. So, you know what? Unpack. Let's just, we're going to camp, gonna camp out here for a little while. Um, but no, let's, let's go back. You said fasting. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about that. What's your fasting time? I know I tried it with you for a little bit yeah. and that didn't work out so well for me, but why do you think it worked for you? Yeah. Well, it worked, you know, honestly, um, like I said, reaching for convenience foods and stuff was really, um, I haven't done it for a while. Okay. I kind of plateaued for a while and, um, I stopped fasting and I have to get, I liked, I liked it a lot and I want to do it again. Um, but I was eating from noon to eight was my allotted time. Um, and then which I doesn't would, seem like that bad, right? It's really not that bad. Like I you would, just wake up and then you don't eat. I just skip <laughs> breakfast. Noon. Yeah. And yeah. you know what I found really the best thing about that for me was skipping coffee. And I actually, it was funny cause I started, uh, intermittent fasting the week after daylight savings time. Oh God. And so, and I, my biggest thing was coffee and you know, like when you're fasting, you can have, you know, tea or black coffee or water. And I'm like, I will not, I will not do black coffee. I I don't need coffee bad enough to ever allow myself to drink black coffee. Yeah. Um, and I tried, I tried, I really did. You did. You Um, actually gave it a valiant 
effort. I did. The black coffee. Yeah. Remember I bought, we went to Starbucks and I bought yeah, like, you got a, like good an Americano coffee. Yeah, or uh-huh. something like that. And I was like, nope. And I drink it. It was terrible. <laughs> um, and I've actually found that I really don't need coffee or caffeine um, in the sure. mornings. So, I mean, I like it. Um, but what I liked about it was the creamer, not yeah, the coffee. Yeah. So I, which is so bad for you. And it's, well, it's I mean, one there are ways things. to make it okay, but, but when you're fasting, you can't have it. You know, when, when John, Glad, fasting. uh, obese to beast, uh, shout out obese to beast, excellent YouTuber, go check him out. Um, but when, one of the things that he constantly says, and it's not like his phrase, I mean, everybody says it is don't drink your calories. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked back and went, okay, I don't really drink a lot of soda. I don't really drink, you know, like I'm not a Gatorade guy. Where am I drinking calories? And sure enough, it's in the coffee. Yes. I mean, like, and I remember like, I never measured. I mean, you get, like, those big old canisters, and you're like, mm, that looks right, you yeah. know? And, or, you know, that tastes good or whatever. And once I started actually measuring that, specifically coffee creamer, right. once I started measuring that out, it was, like, totally eye-opening. Because, yeah. you know, it was however many, I don't, I can't even remember how many calories are in a thing. But, like, however many tablespoons I was putting in my coffee, and then how many cups of coffee was I drinking? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I would, in my brain, I'd be like, oh, well, I skipped breakfast. Right. And, you know, it made me poop. So, like, maybe, <laughs> it's like maybe, I've, I, maybe I've lost weight. And meanwhile, I'm drinking, like, you know, hundreds of calories worth of coffee. And, and some of those creamers and some of the habits that people have with those creamers, um, it's literally like drinking a soda for breakfast. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's insane. Sugar-wise um, and all that, yeah. And what I found out just this week was switching from the, remember for camping, we bought that, that thing of powdered yeah. creamer. I wind up taking in more sugar from the powdered creamer because it does, because I try to, I try to reach that consistency. Yeah. So I had more creamer, even though it's powdered. Yeah. Um, so I think the key there is, is. If you're doing intermittent fasting, you got to cut creamer all together. You can still have coffee. Well, and you can't, like, what I would do sometimes is I would just wait till noon to have my first cup. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And so go. that way I was within my period. And and I ended up losing about 20 pounds. Yeah. Um, in you had a lot in of a really success. short amount of time. Yeah. And then I plateaued and got kind of discouraged and everything. But I'm really grateful because I am still there. Like, I plateaued and I haven't gained any weight back. So, so... I, I know the answer, but I'm going to play dumb for the podcast here. Uh, it, during intermittent fasting, you can't have any coffee at all? No. You can have coffee. Talking like You can have coffee. Um, you can have tea, green tea, um, no sugar, no cream, no milk, none of that. Yeah. Because um, those things will break your fast, and you can have water. Now, talk to me about the hot button word here is bulletproof coffee. It, will that break your fast? Will it not break your fast? Okay, so the difference, so intermittent fasting, a lot of, there's, you know, if I could draw a Venn diagram, you know, there's like a big circle for, for fasting and a big circle for calories. what you're eating. Okay. <laughs> and so a lot of times there's a lot of overlap between intermittent fasting and keto. Um, and so... But there doesn't have to be. There does not have to be. Um, And, yeah, so Bulletproof Coffee is, of my understanding, is keto-friendly. Now, now for those of of you who don't, who maybe aren't uh, familiar with what Bulletproof... Ooh, David says, I I just have black coffee with cinnamon in it. Uh, Oh, yeah. Still fasting. See, That's perfect. It is still fasting. That's awesome. Because it it doesn't... I can't do it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I would, I actually you know what I, I would try that with just the the uh, the cinnamon in it. Ashley says uh, I intermittent fast myself. Normally intermittent fasting requires plain black coffee. I quit coffee totally, but before I quit, I weaned myself yes. off with black coffee. Same girl. That's what that's what Lindsay did. <laughs> that's what I did. For those of you who don't know what bulletproof coffee is, I tried it once and no. I could not get into it. it. Yeah. Literally, what you're doing is you're taking a tablespoon of butter. Not margarine, butter. Or, or I know some people use uh, coconut oil. 
instead I could of probably butter. get behind coconut oil because okay. it's got that, that kind of sweeter that. flavor. But they're Enjoy. literally taking a <laughs> spoonful of butter and then mixing it into I don't know. black coffee. I honestly <laughs> haven't really even researched it that much because the concept of it sounds disgusting. What Now, when I did it, I, I only did it once. There's literally because okay, oil also, and water separate, so yeah, there's literally <laughs> there's like a literally frothy like a, layer. Yeah, just of, a layer an of oil butter spill on the top, <laughs> and it's the most I could <laughs> not get past it. And and here's the truth: intermittent fasting is based off of, uh, or uh, it's not sim- dirty fasting. Similarly, clean it, fasting. It puts your body into ketosis to be fasting for so long. And, now, and so that's why there's a lot of overlap between both the keto diet and right. intermittent fasting. I do not do keto. Now, but here, here's the thing. In order for you to maintain and I don't a, fast right a now clean fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, in order for you to maintain a clean fast, which means a fast that will actually put your body into ketosis, you need to be. And this is the thing I think a lot of people don't understand is you need to not take anything in that's going to elicit a insulin response. Right. So that's why things like, um, what is it? Erythritol and stevia are usually okayed, um, for things. Bulletproof coffee would put you in, into an insulin response, right? Uh, potentially, but it's also, uh, it's keto friendly. So not necessarily. I don't know. I honestly, I, I don't know. Okay. You know what? (laughs) Um, I mean, I know that there are calories in it and that could potentially elicit some sort of response. I mean, you're, you're, it's not that your body's not ever supposed to elicit a, right, right, right. A, um, no, no, no. It's just in your fasting hours, you're not supposed to elicit an insulin response because that's what keeps you from ketosis. This is the science behind it. And I know there were some listeners out there who asked specifically, uh, for the science um, behind things. So does bulletproof coffee break your fast? Here's the consensus that I've found. There's two opinions. Yes, it does. No, it does not. <laughs> are there any, are there any other opinions? Is there any other way for that to go? Mine. Eh, I don't know. Let, uh, me Google it. let me Google it. <laughs> uh, so basically the people who say that it does not break your fast look at the fat and say that fat does not elicit a, a, um, insulin response on its own. Right. Which is completely true. The people who argue that it does argue that on calorically on average, you're taking in instead of zero to 20 calories for a cup of coffee, adding that, that spoonful of butter can actually put you up to about 450 calories. Uh, dep- yeah, depending on the butter that you're using. Although, let me just um, say, I probably was drinking about that much of creamer. So. Oh, probably even more, right? <laughs> well, uh, probably not more. So, well, how many cups, you know? Depends on how the night before was. <laughs> but, but that's the thing. I mean, you look at that, 450 calories coming in, and it's not actually just fat because it is a dairy product. It's also got lactose in it. Or milk toast, I guess. Milk toast? Or lactose. <laughs> did, did I make up a word there? Milk toast is a word, milk right? Milk toast? Milk toast? Isn't milk toast a word? I feel like I no. I heard that. Oh, it's milk toast. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not even... Okay, milk toast. Hashtag milk toast. Uh, I think... Okay. What? Milk toast is a word, but he's saying milk toast... Uh, like lactose. I never claimed to be a nutritionist or a scientist. And uh, I feel fine using words like milk toast. <laughs> what is milk toast? Is a very timid, unassertive, spineless person. Wow. 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 I did not mean to call anybody out there milk <laughs> toast. <laughs> but I I'm going to use it now. Actually, you know what? I am milk toast intolerant. Especially when. <laughs> <laughs> I'm milk toast and tolerant. And that was actually what I was trying Especially to say. Especially one who is easily dominated or intimidated. The more you Look know. Look how it's spelled, too. Oh, whoa. M I L Q U E T O A S T. M I L Q U E T O A S T. 
<laughs> Milk toast. Milk toast. Spineless. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Ooh, I'm going to go ahead. Welcome to our Saturday night. Woo. <laughs> I want to transition here to a little bit more spicy part of the podcast. Whoa. Dad, tune out. <laughs> Dad, it's time for bed. <laughs> after um, dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Destroy your nation after dark. The next segment that we're going to go into um, is going to get a little bit more vulnerable. And uh, I think, you know, potentially a little little steamy, a little funny. So uh, I want to talk about... <laughs> oh, not nervous. Ooh. And I want to get a little vulnerable here. I want to talk about how obesity affects a marriage. I don't think that we should just unpack on sex. I think it, it really does affect everything. Sure. I wasn't so, even going there to be honest. Well, so. uh, the comments are going off on sex and yeah, well. I think that that my obesity has affected our relationship at times. Yeah. Is that a fair statement? I think so. So, cuz here's the thing. And maybe it's because I've I've always been so big, but I've never looked at you and been like, man, she's obese. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for you, I've always seen you. Like, it's so funny, because you know how every girl says, like, oh, I'm so fat. I've <laughs> never looked at Lindsay and seen her as as fat, you know? Like, because uh, I've always been the fat one in the relationship. Well. Um. And so I, I don't, I honestly don't look at our relationship and go, man, there's a bunch of things. If only that, she was thinning. If thin only if she was thinning. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not, you know, but I do know that there has been things in our relationship where I have looked at me and gone, man, if only I was thinner. Well, you know, and I think a lot of those things have not necessarily been, not, it's never been about you being thinner. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's never really been a physical thing as far as like what you look like to me. Um, I think the biggest, the biggest issues have been like when you've been hurt or, you know, the, the injuries that you've sustained because, or that have been uh, prolonged or something like that because you've been injured. Like when you hurt your back. Yeah. Um, or my knee <laughs> or your knee. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but it's like, you've been hurt a lot yeah. and I know that they weren't necessarily because of your weight, but I know that your weight has affected how long you were injured yeah. and, and then it also affects injured. what you could do while you were injured. And so I found that during those times that I was really carrying the brunt of everything that was going on in our home. I mean, I know that I, I do a lot of that now just based on like being yeah, here and being a stay at home mom and stuff. But I mean like taking out the trash or, you know, uh, any number of yeah. things that I would be able to at least ask you to do before. Yeah. Um, you know, the girls are a little bit older now, but at the time they were still little and needed to be carried once in a while or, yeah. and you weren't able to do that. And so there was a lot, um, there was a lot of that kind of stuff where it was like, I knew that your weight was affecting you physically in that way. Right. Um, but there's also like, you know, I remember telling you before that I would wake up in the morning and literally just like reach over and check and see if you were still breathing yeah. because it just kind of became a fact of life that I was probably going to wake up one day and you wouldn't be. Yeah. And it, it was, I remember being really actually like having made a practice of that. And then one day I realized that I was doing that so casually, you know, and that it really caught me off guard at how, how casually I was doing that. Like it was just not, it was not a big deal. It was just like, okay, well, is he breathing today? Cool. He's still breathing. Okay. Yeah. Like if I wouldn't hear you breathing, I would like have to make sure you were breathing. And then right. I just roll over and go back to sleep. And it was like, Isn't it was it, like, it was nothing. You yeah. Know? yeah. I, I, that's so weird to me that, that it becomes habit. Like yeah. anything can become a habit, right? Right. I think that the thing that's affected me the most is we have a lot of friends, specifically Jimmy and Yazzy, who want to go hiking and you want to go hiking. Yeah. The things that happen in your head when you're as big as I am. In my head, you go, hey, let's go camping. and the, Or not camping, hiking. Let's mm -hmm. go hiking. And then in my head, I go... Oh yeah, I want to go hiking because I do. I I want to go hiking. In theory, <laughs> well, but then my head goes, "Well, you're gonna get left behind. 
Right. Everyone's going to go. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. You're, you're going to be more tired quicker right. than everyone else. Um, or honestly, the worst part, the thing that I fear the most is that everyone will try and hang back with me. And I'll ruin the experience for everyone else. Oh. That all happens in a split second in my head. And I go, I hate camping. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I don't want to go hiking. hiking. That yeah. sounds terrible. <laughs> and it goes on and on. I mean, w- even when we just talk about going for walks with the girls, yeah. going to Disneyland, yeah. you know, we talk about flying anywhere. Yeah. That's a big one is flying. Yeah. Um, I have not gotten on a plane since I was probably... 13 or 14 and you know 13 or 14 I was a 250 pound kid right did you need an extender then no no I didn't honestly I remember actually being relieved I went in expecting all these things to happen yeah and none of them happened my head now goes back to that and I've lost a considerable amount of weight now um and I still think man I can't go I can't get on a plane right you know I'm gonna make somebody uncomfortable I got sad. I got really sad and not doing those things and yeah. having those fears and not being able to have those parts of, of my relationship. And that's why I love this. I mean, I say destroy your nation like, you know, kidding. But seriously, I mean, the people, all of you guys who listen and all of you guys who comment and encourage, I can't tell you. Like, I don't know how people lose weight without (laughs) groups like this. One of the coolest things, and this really, honestly, guys, really speaks to the power of being vulnerable and being open and transparent because I guess it was like two months ago now, um, I remember meeting this, this lady at In Shape, my gym, who had mentioned that she had just joined the gym because she had seen the, um, the Facebook and she had seen, uh, there was an article that that was written. So awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Um, it was really cool, but, (laughs) but I I met her and I, I I don't know if you're watching right now and, and if, if you are, I hope telling the story is fine, but I met her and I was so touched by how she interacted with me because she was, I I don't want to guess like her weight or anything, but she was very large and confined to like a walker wheelchair hybrid. And, and, uh, she had said that she saw me and that gave her the encouragement that she needed to get out and, and join the gym and then start doing pool. And well, I think that story is relevant if you want to tell it about the breaking treadmills. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess. I mean, I guess this is the first <laughs> podcast. There are going to be people out there who are, who are not a part of the story, story of yet. that. Uh, but for those those who have not, uh, maybe this is their first introduction to the Destroyer Nation community. I guess nation Destroyer Nation nation. <laughs> um, but for those of you who who, who haven't heard the story, um, me and my buddy Cody. Uh, had started going to this gym in in uh, Shingle Springs called In Shape, and uh, it was hard. It's hard getting you know a six hundred pound body moving and starting working. Tell him Mo morning. sent you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and anyway, so I I went in and I started doing um, the circuit there. Yeah, and then I would I would start going in in the afternoons and walking on the treadmill. And I, I noticed that I started every, the next morning, every, every morning that I got there, the treadmill that I had used the afternoon before, uh, had not a service sign on Wasn't it. Wasn't there one too that you, that, or was it the Stairmaster thing or something that like died while you were on it you, or no, a treadmill? M- this actually happened and you're multiple like, oh, times. I'll just get on this one. <laughs> like- but anyway, so I started noticing that all the machines that I was using would have an out of service sign on it. And that really discouraged me. And uh, I said, hey, yeah, I, uh, sorry about breaking all the treadmills. <laughs> just tell the owner I'm sorry. And, uh, she said, well, actually you can tell him. <laughs> and, um, Michael Simmons was there and, uh. He turned around and he he's the general manager at that that one. And um he just looked at me and he's like, "Hey man, you keep using them, I'll keep fixing them." That's so cool. And I was just like, "Whoa." And it, that moment really changed my life. Yeah. And the cool thing is 
it gave me a it gave me a space to be okay with where I was at in in, in my life, yeah. which is kind of the opposite that that you would expect for someone who's on a weight loss journey. Right. Normally, it's about not being okay with where you are. Right. But he gave me that almost like that permission that it's okay to be where you are right now. Yeah. And it's okay to keep going. Right. And as it was long as like, you don't stay there. Yeah, as long yeah. as you don't stay there. Because here, here's the thing. You will not be successful as counterintuitive as it sounds. You cannot hate your way out of being fat. Right. And that's, that's something that I've learned because I've tried so many times. You cannot hate your way out of being fat. It's a fact. It's been proven scientifically. Cannot hate your, your, your way out of being it's fat. It's just not sustainable to... I think that you can hate, hate yourself into a weight loss journey. Sure. But it's you not have sustainable. To, yeah, it's not sustainable. No. And you have to love yourself through the weight yeah. loss journey. Man, weight loss. Right. <laughs> you know what I find interesting, too? I thought about it earlier when you, when you got, all, got all sexual on me. Yeah. Is how interesting it is that people um, who I would say are of relatively normal weights yeah um feel entitled to comment or ask questions about personal things like what like there have been like a handful of people over the course of our relationship who have had the cojones to ask me how we have sex wow and i'm like what do you not know how that works? <laughs> like, I mean, well, it's when really, a when a man, loves well, a woman. <laughs> when you when you grow up, um, but like, it's just interesting because like I would never go up to any other person and ask them like, like I don't know like, and my I've always been very like flabbergasted by the fact that people would even ask me such a yeah. thing that I'm and and there really isn't there's no story to tell or anything like that. I yeah, mean yeah. it's you just you well, you exactly. Like let me tell you about the birds and the bees. Like it's not really that complicated. And it's just interesting how it's weird to me that people would think about it. Like that, <laughs> that, that they would is... think about it and then think that because you have are obese that they are entitled to ask me about it. That's really interesting actually. That's, isn't it weird? That's actually kind of um yeah, I don't know. That actually kind of makes me feel really weird. Isn't that weird though? Uh, so people are thinking about you naked. <laughs> if if you are a person of regular obesity, <laughs> you're not obese. And here's here's maybe another thing that that people don't don't understand a lot about being obese is that um, there are people. Literally, we, we experienced in, in my first go on on YouTube. Yeah. There are people who hate you for no reason other than your body. There are people who will go out of their way to belittle you and to hurt you uh-huh. for yeah, no I reason. remember that. Remember yeah. that? Mm-hmm. I got this comment. I, I, I was in film school and I had to make a YouTube video. Yeah. About the the assignment was make a PSA about um, kids in and how not being able to play in the in nature was affecting them. Like the only physical activity they, that they got was um, was at, at plastic jungle. Oh, gyms. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to make a correlation to them not playing in nature was somehow affecting right. them. So I, Which made, I agree with. I made way. this and here's the funny <laughs> part, right? Like I made this video with my daughter about kids playing in the in the playground and how the activity was different than if they were out in nature. And some guy, and this is the hilarity of it all. I'll, I'll link it at the end. Some guy comes in and comments to me about how little I understand about activity because I'm so fat and how he would like to meet me in the playground. And, and, and he alluded to like being violent. 
after I confronted him, he was like, no, I meant to work out with you in the playground. It was just the thing that really struck me is, first of all, I knew this person and I hadn't spoken to them in probably in like decades. I mean, yeah. honestly, um, and I don't know if he knew that we were married, we were married or that who you even were or anything like that. But the thing that really struck me was that was how the entitlement thing, like we were talking yeah. about, like Morgan is like the kindest, <clears throat> like gentlest funniest i mean like the your your excellent qualities are are like a mile long list you know what i mean and Thanks. like uh, you're welcome <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you um but like to to have someone just lay into him for being fat was like right. was like the stupidest thing i'd ever heard in my life and the comical part and about like, that's, this like it is that's the worst thing about you yeah, is that I you're guess, fat right okay like. Well, and, and the, the hard part about this was that, was that he was making a comment to me that I, I didn't have a right to talk about activity because I was fat, but he was making the comment and he doesn't have kids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So he didn't have any right to, to speak up. Like right. if, if I didn't have a right to speak up because I'm fat talking about a kid in, in a jungle right. gym, he sure as hell doesn't because he doesn't even have kids who are jungle gym age. Yeah. Like, so the whole thing was like, it just and, was such and so I was bizarre. really, it was one of those times that I was honestly extremely proud of how I handled uh, myself. Yeah. Because I was like, hey man, let's meet up for coffee and talk about. Never did. Never did. But that's the thing. The second that I was like, hey, man. And, and you honestly, disarmed him completely. If you, are, if you are experiencing any sort of hate for your weight or any reason, really. But specifically, I'll, I'll stick with weight because that's where my experience is. If you're experiencing any bit of hate because of your weight, the best thing that you can do is completely disarm them by just saying, hey, you know what? Let's have a conversation about that. Every time that that has happened, and it's happened more than that time. I mean, there's been a lot of occasions where people were just terrible because of my size. Um, and I just, I, I would always just come to them and say, you know, man, let's grab coffee and, and really talk about this. And it's just like to that second, the whole mood changes, yeah. you know? So do that. Do that. Or thing. don't. I See, mean, or don't, I mean, by don't, I mean, I, w I would not even, I mean, you're very nice. I would not even engage. But that's someone. the problem. Here, here's someone yeah. who's going to reduce you, to your, your entire T, your entirety <laughs> to what you look like. I mean, that, I mean, I, I think it is wonderful, but I also think that it is not my responsibility to engage with okay. anyone who's, who's going to reduce me that way. And I wouldn't yeah. expect anyone else to do that either, but I would encourage people to either, you know, disarm someone that way or don't even give them the power. Like don't even, you know what I mean? And well, I, and really consider like this person is literally like only taking into consideration what I look like or only, yeah, but, you know, but here, here's the power. Especially though. those internet warriors. Well, it, it, but that's the thing. So here, here's the power that you have in, in those situations. Has anyone ever said anything like that to you in person? Like, No. Right. Never. No one would ever do that. Right. So meeting them in person would probably... I have had people that I worked with at Red Hawk yeah. comment on my Facebook about it. But not like to you. But not like to me. So then when I went in and saw them, it was like completely different. What's up, man? Yeah. What's up, bro? <laughs> so, but, but here, here's the thing. And, and this is why I would encourage people to change and to have these conversations. Okay. I'm thinking in terms of like bullying though. Uh, like I know, you, but we, listen, listen. I don't on, feel like we're on. under any obligation to. Okay. But listen. I'm listening. Kind of. <laughs> there is currently, um, I, I don't know the guy's name. I'm sorry. Probably should have been more prepared for this. We did not know we were going to talk about this. Well, there is a TED Talks that's come that's out right now about a guy who was really deep in the neo-Nazi movement. Oh, my goodness. And how he came out of it. And one of the things that he said is he said, you know, I met this guy who's, who's African-American. 
instead of being inflammatory or fighting him back, yeah. the, the gentleman who's African-American offered to extend a conversation, just talk with the guy. Yeah. And that, that sparked a relationship and that relationship meant so much to him that it pulled him out of, of the neo-Nazi movement. Yeah. And that, that can happen. That's yeah, the power. Yeah, can be really powerful. It's the power of, that's the power of grace. You know what I mean? That's the power of going, you know what? You said that really mean thing to me. I'm not going to let that be how I see you though. Yeah. So let's go have a conversation. Let's talk about why you think that about me. And let's go hang out in the gym. You know what? When he, when he turned it around and said, um, he told me, he said, I was like, so are you saying that you want to fight me in a jungle gym? And he's like, no, man, I'm just saying let's work out together in jungle gym. And my response was, okay, which one? Let's go. Yeah. I need someone to show me how to work out. So let's work out. And he never responded. But, but I can say without some certainty, because of the way that our future conversations have gone, well, I, st- I still talk to the guy, um, that he no longer fat shames. Mm-hmm. That he doesn't do that to people anymore. Um, and and that's, that's the problem, is that too often when, when the shots are fired, and it's totally understandable, too often when the shots are fired, we go, all right, back, you know, game on. Right. Instead of going... I don't ever do that. <laughs> no, wife, you don't. Wife. <laughs> um... But that's the thing. I just, I would encourage you to, if you find yourself in a situation like that, where you're experiencing hate because of your weight, I know it's hard. I trust me. I know how hard it is to not fight back, but I really would encourage you to just start a relationship with that person because what you're going to find is that you are going to change how that person sees fat people or or black people, or gay people, or whatever the hate, wherever the hate's coming from, you know, you are going to change how those people, I mean, how many times, me and Lindsay are are, are Christian, Um, and there's a lot of stigmas right now that, that come with being Christian, and how many times have people come up to you and said, you know, you're what I think a Christian should be like. Because Lindsay doesn't sit there on her high horse and and tell people that they're, you know, going to hell and yada, yada, yada. Lindsay loves unconditionally. Lindsay's an incredible Christian woman because she she has a lot of flaws. And <laughs> she... That's not where I thought but, this was but going. You live, <laughs> but that's the thing is that you live in those flaws and you, you let it be okay that you have those flaws. But I try not to stay there. I mean, you try not to stay. That's the whole thing. Boom. Mm. That is destroy your nation right there. Boom. Um, and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> so, so anyways, <laughs> uh, hate doesn't have to be get hate. You can, you can change that. You can flip it over. You can take someone's hate and show them grace and say, I love you anyways. Let's go talk about why you have such a hard time. And I'm not saying like if somebody's like, I'm going to kill you. Don't be like, okay, let's go meet in a dark alley. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Let's go meet. No, I'll don't do that. bring the bulletproof coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stay safe. Do it in a safe way. But, uh, but always be the bigger person. That's, that's how you win that fight. Be the bigger person. Because you are. Fatty. (laughs) Ow, you just yanked these out of my ears. Sorry. Ow. So anyways, um, who wants to win a t-shirt? Who wants to win a Destroyer of Treadmills t-shirt? This was the first shirt that we put out. I love it. And we sold $250. For real? Yeah. This shirt's retired. We're not doing any more uh, grind shirts. But I like it. I know. Uh, and, and it's kind of sad because it's, it's officially like, it's, we're going to have to retire this guy. I love it. Um, what, what you, what you got to do to win. I'm going to post this podcast when it's finished and edited. And I'm going to post it up onto the destroyer of treadmills page. And again, I'll just kind of define the rules in that post as well. I want you guys <laughs> to go to the SoundCloud, like the podcast, 
follow the podcast, and then share the podcast. Mm-hmm. So like, follow, and share the podcast. Okay? And then when you're done, come back to the Facebook and comment done. Like, follow, share, Dunzo. done. Okay? And one of the people dun, who does dun, dun, all of those things is going to be selected to win that t-shirt. And then another person who does all of those things is going to be selected to win the blender bottle. Make it happen, Cap'n. I love you guys. You guys have been awesome. This is the first ever Destroy Your Nation podcast. And it's been an awesome one. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. We had a wonderful evening. And don't forget, if you want to win that t-shirt or get that blender bottle, follow the directions in this post and in the end of the podcast. We love you guys. Thank you guys so much for being a part of our Maiden Voyage podcast. Good night.